So why don't we get into it and, and uh, get, start calling the action along with the fans here? Absolutely. wrestling background what do you know about this guy's amateur wrestling background well i know he's a standout in the new york state region and does have an accomplished background as an amateur you'll see that he is very adept at a number of maneuvers as we see the diabolical kevin sullivan coming out with the blood hunter yes Former head booker of WCW and, and has faced Hulk Hogan. He's been on Baywatch, has managed the Dungeon of Doom, managed the Giant against Hulk Hogan, and now he's managing the Blood Hunter. Yes, a, a true legend and one of the premier minds in the history of this business. One last thing about, oh, as we get off hot with the Blood Hunter kicking Sullivan in the midsection. Yeah, he's known to he's known for his chops and he's known to have one speed and that's full speed ahead as as Nick Sullivan feeling that right there. Maybe he's regretting wearing the sweater to the ring. I was gonna say that's an interesting choice. Oh and a massive dive by the blood hunter onto Nick Sullivan. Wow. When you see a man who's no cruiserweight, two hundred and seventy pounds, like the blood hunter go through those ropes onto a man you realize just how wild he is. Well, he is a luchador, but he's brawling right now, smashing Nick Sullivan's head with no hockey helmet into those boards. And now he looks to follow it up with a chair, but Sullivan stops him. The natural is his nickname. And now he has a chair. Strike to the back. Yeah. I believe there was almost 500 fans in attendance. I think you said 463, as now the Blood Hunter went face first into those hockey boards, which I think are even thicker than the fiberglass. And I will give the fans credit for the action that you see on the outside. They scattered. They knew what was happening, and they didn't want to take the chance, especially with someone with the reputation of the Blood Hunter. Yeah, this is the first time Bloodhunter ever wrestled in this arena as Nick Sullivan oh eats the, uh, the ring post. He may have lost some teeth on that. The referee's checking on him. And, and what's Kevin Sullivan doing? Kevin Sullivan nails him right in the ribs. See, that's, that's not called for and in the head. That is not called for and very disgusting. Well, I don't know where President Michael Andrews is at this point in time, but he's, he's definitely not watching that. I didn't even think Sullivan needed to do that because uh, the natural's in a lot of pain here. And there we go. The Blood Hunter will use Joking. anything he can get his hands on. He, he doesn't care. He's undefeated. He has not been pinned since he debuted. And he's held many titles, but he's had to vacate those titles due to being barred from various states but he's not barred in canada as he throws nick sullivan the natural back into the ring and this might be over real quick well it seems that way with with the blood hunter again relentless in his attack but sullivan 
I've seen him in action before and there's a lot of reserves there. But he misses with an elbow. Yeah, and that's about 265 pounds coming down on an elbow and he looks like he's feeling it. And there's about probably 320, wow. 330 pounds. Wow. Crushing blood on her blood on her charges him but suplexes. There's that amateur background. Belly to belly. Count of one, two, two count only. You're gonna have to do more than that. You're gonna have to throw in everything but the proverbial kitchen sink to stop the blood hunter. Uh, yeah, this blood hunter goes for a clothesline, but there's a German. This German could be it. Like one, two, two count. That was right on his neck, too. He'll he'd be feeling that for a couple weeks after, I'm sure. And the crowd here is already very much into this match. Another big avalanche. Big, big, big strike in the corner. Sullivan using that bulk. Oh, but he got caught. Went to the well one too many times. Vicious clothesline by the Blood Hunter. Yeah, he just about beheaded him there. And now it looks like he's going up for his signature headbutt off the top That's rope. It. That's it. You could count to 5,000. One, two, three. Wow. Impressive, impressive opening match with the Blood Hunter doing what he's known for. And that's absolute devastation. Yeah. Gotta, Kevin gotta Sullivan seems happy. I'm excited to be here on Mr. Beefy Goodness Vance Nevada, the author of Uncontrolled Chaos and a 30 year professional wrestling veteran is my first time wrestling in ottawa and i can't think of a better occasion to do it than for the great north wrestling 15th anniversary show i can't wait to get in that ring so here we are back with mr beefy goodness vance nevada against bin hameen of the russo brand a man who's a podcaster and quite a presence on vince russo's channel vance nevada of course the author of a very best-selling book uncontrolled chaos which documents the history of canadian professional wrestling yeah i actually met vance back in 2002 or 2003 in stampede wrestling in some i think it was called basano alberta he wrestled the cuban assassin and he's a good wrestler i'll give him that he's been around a long time he uh, talked about me in his book and talked about Great North Wrestling, so I thought that was pretty cool, but now he's making his Great North Wrestling debut. Well, and what I like about Vance is he's a scrappy competitor. He's not afraid to get in there as he reverses a wrist lock, but Bin Hameen, big man, about 300 pounds, significant size advantage, but maybe Vance will use that veteran wily skill in this match, but right now, looking like he has control and you mentioned the blood hunter and nunzio and carlito are going to be in smith falls i understand vance nevada will be returning to great north wrestling july the 15th saturday night in smith falls tickets are already on sale at ticketweb.ca that's right he's going to be selling copies of his book again and meeting fans very nice guy as ben takes him over controlling his head on the mat. Yeah, I understand Ben was was very much hated at this event. Uh, definitely not a fan favorite. They were certainly behind the Canadian in this one. Well, that's not an unusual circumstance. I, I first became familiar with Ben in New York State, the scene there, and he has, has definitely cut a path of his own destruction as well and not a foot bend or break the rules as we're seeing here no he, he doesn't seem like he's much for the rules i haven't I've, i know he did a podcast with you for great north wrestling but i'm not that familiar with him but he does appear to to have a very classic style of wrestling he, he is reminiscent of those those 80s wrestlers he's definitely a brawler and you're not going to see a great deal of uh, technical acuum. You're not going to see a, a Jeremy Prophet type match, but he is very good at what he does. I can see that. He's in full control here, and there's a move reminiscent of Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. Yes. 
Excellent fluidity on that. That'll give uh, Vance Nevada a good amount of whiplash. So will that uh, headbutt to the sternum. Again, methodically taking apart, not fancy, not high flying, but method with a stomp to the, the, I guess that's the ankle, methodically taking apart his opponent. And I would say reminiscent of the Andersons there, wouldn't you? I, I'm, I was almost thinking we were going to see a Garvin stomp there for a second, who I've interviewed a couple of times, but uh, he only did two. Yes, and uh, what a competitor Ronnie Garvin was, rugged Ronnie Garvin, another Hall of Famer that has been featured, as you said, on the Hannibal TV, where, where you really pioneered getting these interviews and preserving wrestling history as Hameen works on the shoulder of Nevada, the crowd clearly in Nevada's corner. That The first Ronnie Garvin interview was actually done at Raymond Rougeau's house. They're hunting buddies up. Vance Nevada showing that he still has some fight left in him here against Ben Hammond. Knocking down the big redwood, as Gorilla Monsoon would say. Looks like a uh, an atomic drop. Yes, an atomic drop, and that's got to readjust the boys. Vance is fired up here. He's getting a second wind. And a second atomic drop now followed by a big clothesline and Ben Hammond is down. Vance is wasting time now. That's, though. that's exactly what I was going to say. Why would he pander to the crowd when he's got the advantage? He needs to be right on top and he's probably going, yep, he's going to pay for it. Crotched right on the top rope courtesy of Hamid. This, this was a, a cardinal mistake and, and not a mistake you would expect from a veteran. Looks like a fireman's carry into a, looks like F5. a modified F5. I know what he's setting up for here. He's setting up for the Steiner recliner, if you will, to reference another great North Wrestling competitor of the past. Yes, uh, great, great North Wrestling had, I think, a three-match series of Scott Steiner versus Jeremy Prophet, and Jeremy Prophet actually won that series. But I think you're right. This is very reminiscent of the Steiner recliner. I think Vance Nevada is in a lot of trouble here. He already, he already has the size disadvantage, and this is going to be a lot of pressure on that neck and lower back. Yeah, I would say stick a fork in him. He's probably done. He's tapping out yes, already. He's tapping. he's tapping. Now let go of that, Hameen. See, that's completely uncalled for. Let go of it when the man submits. An impressive victory nonetheless by Ben Hameen. Impressive debut. And, and here's another debut. Persephone Vice, who we saw earlier attack Jessica Black on her way into the building. She's not turning her back on... I guess she didn't see Persephone earlier. And Persephone well, is continuing the beat down here. She seems to be understandably a, a little stunned. That being Jessica Black, a former GNW's champion, women's champion, and Persephone Vice, a, a, a large, powerful competitor, obviously trying to make a name for herself in the women's division of GNW, and perhaps look to the future when the women's division may have a champion again but obviously not afraid to mix it up right away jessica black of course was part of the very first ever AEW match in canada in toronto in, yes in uh, september was that october yeah september october was her and uh, jeremy prophet in a mixed tag match so they, they'll have that distinction forever, part of history, the very first ever AEW match in Canada, and now AEW looks like it's making Canada a regular stop as we're seeing some revenge here on the much bigger Persephone Vice. Well, that's one thing I was going to mention about Jessica Black. She is a veteran and, and a very skilled veteran at that, so she may be able to overcome this all... Oh, I almost spoke too soon. Massive boot to the midsection. I was going to say her skill and veteran abilities could possibly overcome this size advantage. 
I know Black is from Montreal. Where is Persephone Vice from? I believe she is from the province of Quebec as well and has competed actually all over Canada and the United States with a, a very devastating, devastating leg drop on the shins, it looked like, of Jessica. Yeah, she's really working away on those knees of Jessica Black and she Jessica Black was already weakened from that backstage attack that luckily the president as well as some GNW officials were able to break up. Otherwise, this match may not have even taken place. She, she being Persephone, reminds me, she almost works a, a style reminiscent of, uh, I, I'm thinking of Awesome Kong. Remember her? Yeah, I actually met her back when I promoted TNA's first ever Canadian tour back in December. 2007 that I that I wrestled Abyss on but I think Persephone is actually taller than Awesome Kong as we just heard that slap and it felt like it was coming right through the monitor 100% devastating offense on the part of Persephone Vice and that size advantage as well is akin to being able to absorb punishment as we're seeing here by these knife edge chops by Jessica yeah, these and, girls are, are hitting hard. I'll give them that. And if the backstage attack wasn't enough, they're going to be sore after this one. I think Black might hold the record for Chop so far tonight. Absolutely. But not much effect on the big Amazon. What is this? Is this a Samoan drop, per se? Oh, Looks like devastating, it. devastating move. And a count and a cover one. Two. That looked like about a two and a half, Hannibal. That was very close. This is a big match for Jessica Black. The first women's match of the relaunch. Jessica Black held that title for a while. She defeated uh, the most popular Great North Wrestling Women's Champion, Lady Yasmin, for it. But the, the title is currently vacant as Persephone eats a big elbow to the jaw. Jessica Black was also a Femme Fatale champion at one point. Yes, and it looks like Persephone O missed with the big splash attempt in the corner. Jessica, again, taking some time. Punched her right in the nose there. Punched wow, her in the throat. That's got to hurt, but look at Persephone still going. She ducked a, a clothesline there, just pushed it right over her head and followed up with a flying clothesline. Now she's going after Persephone. Devastating clothesline and a cover. One, two. That looked like about a two and a half. Persephone's legs are about as thick as Jessica's torso. Yeah, and that's something that as time goes on with those blows, that that, that weight and power advantage is going to be something that Jessica will, will really have to overcome as both competitors are obviously going full on and winded a bit at this point. That is for sure. Persephone Vice not giving up, making her way back up right now. And in the uh, the weeks to come, we're, we're going to be announcing some more. Oh, my goodness, a, a big hip strike. We're going to be announcing some more names for Smith Falls, but also upcoming events in the summer of GNW 2023. And look at this draping DDT attempt. Wow, that's some significant power on the part of Jessica. And a cover, one, two. That was a two and three quarters. Jessica pulling her to her feet. Looking to perhaps finish her off. Oh, and a, a spear maneuver. One, two. Three. Jessica's victorious. As I was saying, we will be announcing some new or perhaps returning female talent to GMW in the weeks to come. Now, this is a match that I'm interested in, was interested in, and that's Magna McLaren, the young upstart competitor with Big Daddy Diamond in his corner against Wes Briscoe.
I think you're muted, Hannibal. We can't hear you. As Big Daddy Diamond gets on, Mr. Briscoe. I am back. Sorry, I'm holding it up to my mouth now uh, as, as we're continuing. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, great. This is our first time testing the live commentary here, folks, and we appreciate you tuning in. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe to The Hannibal TV for new interviews and live content. It's all available here on The Hannibal TV. I wanted to, to preface before we got into this match, I, I really think a lot of Magna McLaren, he's, he's a very young individual, but he is a student of the game and his skill set is clearly beyond his years. This is an excellent matchup. And the veteran poise of Wes Briscoe you see right now in no hurry to get things going. Dan, you're right. Big win for Jessica Black. And we'll see if Magnum can get the big win that he needs here tonight from, from Wes, who's looking very happy. He thinks he's going to have an easy night. He's, he's outnumbered Magnum here for sure. I don't know how many of these guys are there. One of them looks kind of like King Kong Bundy. Maybe it's Bundy's son. Well, that's the, uh, that's the sort of thing that I don't like to see in Great North Wrestling is outside interference. So you'll see I, I keep a, a very close eye on this match. The fans are behind the Aces and Eights, which which is unusual. They're, they're behind the guys that that are outnumbering the others, but with the size of Magnum's manager bodyguard here, maybe it's not outnumbers. We see a chicken dance now from Wes Briscoe. Well, that's that veteran ring psychology again. You can see that Magnum is is hot and is clearly, clearly being affected by the taunting of Briscoe. I think they should have a dance off. Well, it's not ECW, but... Uh, <laughs> There's Wes with some uh, nipple twisting added to his dance. I don't know if he wants to apply for a stripper's job or, or wrestle tonight. He's a man of many talents, that's for sure. And he looks like he's having the time of his life out there, really. For sure, but he I've been in the ring with Wes. He's one of my best opponents. He's, he's beaten me. I beat him. I give him credit where credit is due. Great amateur wrestler, amateur boxer, Muay Thai expert, professional wakeboarder. And I guess we're seeing now he can also dance. That is impressive. But will they lock up? There's a lot of stalling in this match. At one Magnum. point, uh, he was also married to Red Velvet from AEW. I believe they're still married. However, oh, yes. I don't follow him that closely, but I believe they are still married. So he's surrounded by uh, wrestling royalty between her and AEW and Jack Briscoe's was his uncle and Gerald Briscoe's his father. What what a pedigree this guy has. Oh, that's, that's 100%. You can't argue that. A lot of stalling in this match, mostly on the part of Magnum, who starting to remind me of the the great Larry Zabisco. Yes, definitely. Larry was was known for his stalling, but where it would bother some wrestlers, Wes Briscoe doesn't care. He's having oh fun. My. He's uh, wiping his butt now with the uh, toy title there that, that Magnum brought to the ring. I'm not sure if that's a prop or, or or if it's a Sudbury championship or what. I know he's from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, way up north. Well, whatever it is, it's very disrespectful on the part of Mr. Briscoe, but... It's fired him up. It got him in the ring. Yep, yep. Maybe, maybe mission accomplished. The fans are certainly behind him. Oh, and we have the first lockup of the match into a side headlock. Magnum got control of Mr. Briscoe now. And a shoulder block, Wes goes down. Dark Cash is not happy. Dark Cash has lost some weight since he last appeared in Great North Wrestling. 
He's he's a big supporter of Wes Briscoe complaining that Magnum pulled Briscoe's hair. I don't think Briscoe has any hair anymore. He used to be known for it, but time uh, sometimes isn't the kindest to us, as I know myself, as far as the hair goes. Well, Dark Cash can afford to be on the uh, smaller side with that walking condominium on his right, the, the King Kong Bundy-esque individual. And a shoulder block, down goes Magnum this time. Yeah, I have no idea who these guys are other than part of the Aces and Eights Quebec chapter. It looks like they're, there's possibly six of them. And they, they're not small boys either. The, the one across from the turnbuckle pad there looks like he just feasted on, on somebody. Yes, to, uh, to again quote Gorilla Monsoon, he resembles a small fishing village. This this is understandable though why Magnum brought Big Daddy Diamond with him because my goodness those are significant odds on paper and I'll tell you as the executive vice president of Great North Wrestling I certainly was not impressed with this menagerie that accompanied Wes out to the ring. No and Wes might get blown up from the chicken dancing but there's a big move right there another hip toss oh i thought it was going to be another hip toss but he wrenches the arm of magnum an arm ringer into a oh it looks like another strike he's trying to work on the beautiful fireman's carry takeover though fireman's carry then a leg drop on to his arm i have not seen this match yet this is my first time seeing this match and i'm very impressed with the technical skills as well as the dancing of Mr. Briscoe, who's losing his pads a little bit as he pulls them up. Well, that's that's due to the the hectic uh, motions of Wes when he's when he's not uh, involved in the grappling. He's uh, he's a constant constant motion as we see here. Yes, oh, yeah. th this, he's not this cooling down. That's for sure. That's one thing about the chicken dance. Not only is it taunting Magnum, but it's keeping that blood flowing. Well, Magnum seems to be getting frustrated on the outside. Oh, 100%. Veteran moves, veteran psychology, savat kick by Wes into the midsection of Magnum and punches. And a nice elbow. Wes firing up the crowd, which as you pointed out is interesting considering all beautiful clothesline. And it looks like a bulldog attempt. Yeah, Bulldog yes. Headlock. You don't see those very often, oh. but pulled off perfection with perfection. One, two, two count only. And it looks like uh, the Bundy-esque individual and Dark Cash are uh, trying to get into it with uh, Big Daddy Diamond. That would be a mistake. Yeah, they Big do Daddy outnumber Diamond. him. I, I don't know really much about this Big Daddy Diamond other than he was a wrestler at one point, but Magnum's in trouble. Wes is on the second rope now. Oh, and it looks like a submission attempt. Yeah, Beautiful. well, they're on the rope, so I don't know if he could get a submission, but he could break the arm. Going to have to break it. Wes is clearly uh, unsteady on his feet here, though. Yeah, he's taking a lot of blood. Now the, now the manager... No, he Big, slipped. He sl I don't know if he, he slipped. slipped. It looked like Big Daddy Diamond pulled his leg down and threw him in the I, ring, and he ate I, the canvas. I did not see that. He looks like now. Dark Cash slipped. pulled the pulled the referee's leg. Where is the president during all this? Is what I want to know. And now the manager again is cranking on West on the other side. Here comes Law and Order right there. What? Okay, yeah, so you were there that night. Okay, I will commend you for this. I will Thank commend you. you for this. Thank you. I, I I saw this going on, and I thought enough's enough. Everyone back to the back. That's what I ordered them. Especially and a roll-up attempt by Wes. The ref, one, two, only two. Especially when Wes, on that, that last sequence there, slipped and almost injured himself severely on the ring. You're, you look like you're in trouble here. I wouldn't um, turn my back on that crew. Look at look at this guy, the hunchback of Notre Dame. I'm fairly Late fearless. Home. And I still go about 270, so I can handle myself on occasion. 
Yeah, for the fans that haven't seen you in person, uh, you're what, 6'3", 6'4", 270? You're thereabouts. Definitely, uh, you could you could have been a wrestler, but you might you might be smarter going on the promoter's route and, and being in more control. You definitely restored order there. I'll, I'll commend you on that. Looks like Magnum's back in control now. No, West blocked no. the suplex. I think Wes hasn't been the same since he slipped on the apron there. For sure. No, as Ma he did block it, but then Magnum got him the second time. This Magnum is a superstar in the making, and I'm, I'm very impressed. However, I felt the need to come out and restore order and make sure that this match went down fair and square. There you go. Someone's giving you a thumbs up in the comments. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching Vincent on our Twitch channel. There is a Great North Wrestling Twitch channel. We're also, this is airing on Twitter, at the Hannibal TV, at the Hannibal TV on Facebook, and of course, at the Hannibal TV on YouTube. Follow us on all those platforms as Wes Briscoe getting a second win here. Cross body. Cross body. One, two, only two. Oh, that was a very hard clothesline. I have to say for a 17-year-old, that's impressive. Vicious. Two, two he, and three quarters. Magnum's been wrestling since he was about 14, though, from my understanding. He, he is, He's picking West Briscoe up now. And now Magnum yep. putting, putting the boot on the throat of Mr. Briscoe. Definitely Wes Briscoe is in trouble here. This has been the longest match of the night so far. Magnum uh, is still going strong. Definitely a good cardiovascular training. But West is not a quitter and West is very, very tough. Somebody oh. says when the Magnum shoots, he don't miss. Yes. That's his tagline. Does he I, actually I, fire weapons? Is he familiar with weapons? I, I'm not at liberty to disclose that. I think what we're seeing here, though, is the fact that Wes, ever since he slipped... Oh, what a tremendous, tremendous... Reminiscent of Arn there. Anderson. It could be over. What a spine buster. I was going to say Triple H or Arn Anderson, but Wes kicked out. I did notice Jacques Rougeau is a fan of uh, Magnum, too. Uh, he commented on uh, a few of the Great North Wrestling-related posts about Magnum. So definitely a lot of superstars keeping an eye on him. Of course, Jacques had a hand in not only my training, but Jeremy Prophet's training, who is defending the Canadian Championship next against Greek god Papadon which was a heck of a match. Magnum coming in, gets caught. West seems to have a second win here. I thought he was a little winded from the slip on the uh, apron, but he's coming right back. Now this is a nice. third win. That was incredible. True. Back elbow right to the sternum, throwing him off the ropes now. Reverse. Oh, telegraphed it. Neck Reminiscent breaker. of Rick Rude there, Rude Awakening. Wes looking to put him away. And a pin attempt coming here. One, two. You mentioned two. second win. This is like Wes's third or fourth life in this match. It looked like he was finished numerous times, but he's not giving up and neither is Magnum. Absolutely. What a, what a quality matchup from Great North Wrestling and the executive committee. There you go, a spear. spear. Shades Setting him up for something. For something. I think he's going to the top. He says it's over. Could be a moonsault here, it looks like. Looks like it, yes. Wow. Beautiful moonsault, but West gets out of the way. Wow. Nobody home on that. And here comes Big Daddy Diamond. 
There's that uh, piece of tin. What are you doing in there? Are you calling this match due to the interference? I saw what, what are you justice. doing? The referee's looking the other. What did you hit Wes for? It's all about respect, Hannibal. Aren't you respect. supposed to be the one keeping order in all of this? What the? I, what Magnum wins? I You're the one that cost him the match. No, I think Mr. Briscoe had a case of food poisoning. You better hope the president didn't see that. See what? Wes Briscoe, Wes Briscoe, as a wise man once said, when you think you got all the answers, I change the questions. And tonight, the Magnum and the Booker Man, we changed the questions. You see, the two most powerful things in professional wrestling right now is the pencil and the star power. And you're looking at it right now. Tell it, Booker Man. Wes, I've been talking about respect. Do you know what respect means? Respect is not thinking that you can walk into Great North Wrestling after many years absence and have things your way. Not once did you call me in all these years to find out what was happening, see if you could come in. And now all of a sudden, you want in on Great North Wrestling because it's a hot property again. Well, the reason it's a hot property is because of this man right here. This man, the Magnum, an international superstar. He and I are going to manage Great North Wrestling to heights that it's never seen before. And you know what? There ain't a damn thing you can do about it. No, no, there ain't a damn thing. You know why? Do you know why that is? It's because of one reason, one reason only, Wes. And that's because you're gonna remember one thing for the Magnum. When the Magnum shoots, he don't miss. Executive Vice President Jack Kilby, when you were brought on last year, you were supposed to help the company, and you've been doing that. My role as president, you are supposed to challenge me. We're not supposed to agree on everything, but we are supposed to support each other. After what happened here tonight in Ottawa, I have to say that is unacceptable. That's not how we do things at Great North Wrestling. No one person is more important than the company. So what I'm going to tell you and all the fans out there, not only will there be a hearing for a possible suspension for Magna McLaren, there will also be a review by the disciplinary committee for you and your position, Executive Vice President. So Jack Kilby, Consider yourself put in the corner. Of course I'm ready. Looks like you're in some trouble. He's got no authority. He's got no authority. He can't do that to me. I am Great North Wrestling. He can't do that. We'll see what happens there. Are you going to pull a Vince McMahon? I'll tell you, he's not suspending me or Magnum or Big Daddy Diamond. We are the big money players. And we're controlling this industry moving forward. You know who might be suspended, though? Mr. President. I'll have a statement later this week. Let's focus on this match. Are you even allowed to be commentating this? I, I didn't hear any blowback from the President Michael Andrews yet, but he seemed upset. Well, he could be upset, but the bottom line is he's, he's a useful idiot to me. He has no power over me. Again, he admits, I own this company, I run this company, he's got, he's a figurehead and he serves at my pleasure. So I'll have a statement myself in, in the week. Well, I'm just a commentator and podcaster, so I'll let you guys sort that out. But in the ring right now, we have a one hour time limit match here for the Canadian title. Jeremy Prophet, the other person from the first ever AEW match, one of Jacques Rougeau's students, a guy that uh, backed down Kevin Owens in a backstage confrontation in Quebec, which is one of the reasons why he's not in WWE, there's politics, but he's got a big problem ahead of him tonight. Greek God Papadon. I know nothing about this guy. Who is he? What can you tell us about him? 
Well, I certainly do. He is a veteran. He is a standout. He also wrestled for AEW in the recent past. He has held titles all over the United States, especially in the Northeast. A very skilled technician and really double tough in the ring, as we'll see. This is an excellent matchup. Some would say it's a contrast in styles, but it is an excellent opponent for our Canadian champion, Mr. Profit. As you see right away, getting the advantage, GGP. Well, I would say that Jeremy Profit is someone I've wrestled a lot, as it looks like he's going to skin the cat here. He can That's wrestle impressive. technical, he can fight, he can brawl, he can high fly, he can do it all. That's one of the reasons why he's been champion since 2019 with the Hurricane Rana there. Nice arm drag. Yes, Prophet is so smooth with his with his technical uh, technical aspects of his game and a kip up there. Pop it on in the corner. Jeremy's going to charge him. Wow, that's got to hurt. Hannibal, have you taken that move yourself? All of my matches mixed together, but yeah, you could see there was no space in between those knees and the chest. And there was just a big knee or or shin right to the head of ggp and we're going to see some of this high flying early it looks like absolutely that profit is so adept at and famous for but papadon rolls out of the ring here's a trivia fact for you papadon appeared in the movie the wrestler with mickey Rourke from 2006 7 Really? Uh, I think it actually came out in 2008. I remember seeing it in, in early 2008, but maybe it was released in 2007. That that was interesting. Interesting way to block uh, something to the outside. Someone's mentioning we should have ring mats on the outside. I bet Jeremy Prophet is, is wishing that as he just took a clothesline yes. right to the concrete. Very, very innovative offense. Very innovative on the part of Papadon. We don't Jeremy usually... Prophet's a future star for sure, as Betrayed by Sin mentions that in the comments. Big chop there Big by chops. GGP. Big strong chops by GGP. However, I must say they're not as strong as Hannibal chops when I used to wrestle, and, and Jeremy Prophet has taken plenty of those, so that's not going to put him out. But maybe the eye rake will. Absolutely. A, a, a big size advantage, too, on the part of yourself as compared to GGP. GGP is one of those competitors that, that just keeps going. Uh, as Monsoon used to say, he was very pugnacious and he can absorb a lot of punishment, as we're seeing right now. But comes back with those hard strikes to the head. And Prophet is not only the longest reigning Canadian champion, but he's a two-time Canadian champion. His first title victory was from none other than Leaping Lanny Poffo, the genius himself who recently passed away, who was the first ever Great North Wrestling Canadian champion. And, and last week was the anniversary wow. of his brother Macho Man's death, but this could be it. What a suplex. One, two. What a snap suplex on the part of Papadon. He is a grinder, a brawler, but also has technical skill as well. Definitely. We're, we're, we're seeing a lot of dirty tactics wow. here. The elbow to the jaw. That's got to hurt. And pissing the crowd off. Another mark of GGP. The fans always get on GGP. He's not likable. I, I will say that for sure. I... He definitely rubs me the wrong way, too. Look at the, uh, oh, Prophet. Oh, my God, you can hear that. Prophet kicked him right in the, the Right chop. in the lip. Looks like he might get a bloody lip out of that. Look at the pace of this match. Wow. That's unique, using the second rope to hit him low. You don't see that too team. often. And he's saying that it was a three count, jaw jacking with referee sideburns i think he should stay on his opponent now ggp and ben hammond they they're both vince russo protégés aren't they 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 are on the russo brand they do a smackdown review and a raw review on russo's brand and they have had wow. 
their own podcasts on the Hamid Media Group. They are well, they're, they're tougher than me if they could sit through Raw and SmackDown every week. I just canceled my WWE Network subscription because I couldn't, couldn't use it. So I got a month left. I'll do a couple more watch-alongs. But, but congratulations to them to sit through that every week. Could be over right now. Big back Literally. suplex. One, two. That looks like about a two and a half. Yeah, you gotta you gotta give them credit where credits due to to sit through that product every week, week in and week out. I certainly could not do it. One thing I will say about Great North Wrestling here that I'll commend you on is it's been all action. There has not been a lot of talk, and that's exactly what I like to see as we see a knee right to the eye of Jeremy Prophet. I couldn't agree more. Wow, more innovative offense on the on the part of GGP with look like a, a big shoulder to the face again. Yeah, GGP really tackle. targeting, really, really targeting his his facial area. Jessica Black uh, might have something to say to him after if if he messes up Prophet's face, as we know those two are an item and sometimes team together. Well, that's that's the cost of being in this game. It's not for the weak at heart. Someone commenting on the snap suplex. Yeah, these guys are going hard, and they don't seem to be slowing down. The more this match continues, and we're a good way in at this point as we see a nice lifter there. Look, look at those European uppercuts, or as he would say, Greek uppercuts. You have wrestlers uh, from the U.S., Greece, Canada, all over the place. It's not just Canadian talent in Great North Wrestling. You're really looking far and wide for the best unsigned talent. And Carlito, who was just on the last WWE pay-per-view, is on your next show in Smith Falls along with Ted Hart, yes. who uh, is one of the best high flyers of all time. Making his uh, potential return to Canada for the first time in God knows how long. But I was about to say Carlito got the pop of the night at that WWE Backlash pay-per-view. The man is, is super hot, on fire, and very excited to come in to Great North Wrestling. And I think the fans are going to be very pleased with the matches that we're putting together for that show. Now, could Carlito or Ted Hart be wrestling the winner of this match by any chance? Can you can you lend me uh, any secrets since I'm not part of this championship committee? Well, I, I don't want to give too much away, but you know, Hannibal, that the Canadian champion is always in the forefront of the executive committee's mind for opponents. And you can bet that Jeremy Prophet will have a high-profile defense July the 15th in Smith Falls. Now, Jeremy Prophet likes to say he has Haku-like hair, and he paid the price for having that style of hair right there as he just got whipped down, and, and I can imagine how much that must hurt. Well, you pay the price for it, and it certainly has been an area that GGP has gone to liberally in this match as he misses with an elbow. Appears to have hurt his elbow significantly. Charge in the corner. Oh! And Papadon hits the ring post, eats the steel at about full speed. That's got to yeah. be. Yeah. I did that uh, when I wrestled Al Snow, and I think that caused me a permanent shoulder injury. I had to have several stem cell injections in my shoulder after to get it working no again. Doubt. As, as Prophet hulks up there. Waiting, waiting for GGP. Misses the clothesline attempt, and a clothesline of his own drops GGP, and an elbow, flying elbow. Profit Big like drop kick. Out. That's a beautiful drop kick. That was a beautiful drop Lots kick. Lots of power. I must uh, pat the executive committee and myself on the back. This match did not disappoint. It has been non-stop action, and the crowd loves it, Hannibal. Take it a page out of your buddy Barry Horowitz's book with the pat of yourself on the back there. But I do admit these two are putting on quite a display. With we see a modified uh, pile driver there. Two count only. 
Actually, I think that's a snow plow, isn't it? Speaking yeah. about snow. I was going to say a tiger driver or a melter driver, but I was probably wrong. There, there's so many different names for these moves. It's hard to keep track. Wow. Tries to throw Profit to the outside, but no. Profit now Profit's up on the top rope. Look at the speed of this man. Always impressed with me. He's quite popular with the fans. Looks like a crossbody. Oh my goodness, look at the height. A la Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Nope, two count. Wow, let's give the devil his due. GGP is one resilient individual. Profit arguing with three. the ref. Yep. You know, I do remember uh, hearing many people say this was a great match, and I'm seeing why now, including, I think, Kevin Sullivan uh, told me after he got back to uh, the Washington area that, that this match was one of the matches that night that really impressed him. I, if, I would I would concur, and being in the arena, wow, that's got to be it. Being in the arena, you could hear it. The fans were into every maneuver. Two, that that was close. That's the first time I've seen a flying European uppercut. Yeah, that was very close. Papadon may actually have an argument here that that was three, but he shouldn't be wasting valuable time. Stay on your opponent. Enough jaw jacking with the ref and the fans. Yes, we know he thought he got three, but this is giving Profit time to recover. Right, and the fans don't have any say. Even if the fans agree with him that he has three, that's not going to change the ref's mind. No, that's not going to get you to the pay window. This will, though, the Savat style kicks. Remem reminiscent of Kato from the Orient Express. Schoolboy roll up one, two. That was close, too. There's a lot of fancy footwork in this match. I know Jeremy has a kickboxing background, but GGP must have some type of martial arts background as well. Jeremy giving GGP a taste of his own medicine here. Yes, I believe GGP has done MMA before. And it looks like he's done some wrestling, too. Absolutely. Looks backbreaker like world backbreaker my goodness leg trip yeah he's definitely knows how to wrestle side russian leg sweep that looked like almost a three two yeah i will say this it appears that the ref is having some difficulty counting in a in a uh, uniform manner some are slower than others or is that just me hannibal i think the referee is getting tired these yes. guys have gone about 20 minutes or so now as we almost see a pile driver reversal by profit sunset roll flip up. roll One, up style two. no You're these right. guys are going at full speed here wow no wonder the ref is winded well so they've the just got the record for pinfalls in the match for tonight so far i would say in a bridge What's happening here? Looks like he's trying to schoolboy him over again. Oh, One, he's got the ropes. Foot on the ropes. Foot on the ropes. Now he's getting tired of the technical with a punch to the temple there. Another punch. No. Looks like Jeremy's got him hooked. They're battling it out now. Goes for another punch. Jeremy grabs it. Super kick right to the jaw. Oh, it looks like Papadon's out. Oh, my God. No. Almost took his head off with that short clothesline. Both competitors are down. That reminds me of the clothesline that put Adam Page from AEW out of action for, for months. But Jeremy Prophet's in. still wrestling in the match. He's not quitting. We have the toughest wrestlers in all of wrestling. They don't want mats outside the ring. They like it that way. Absolutely. And they're about to answer at the seven count. Someone says he's getting tired. Yes, this this match is making me tired too. This is this is up and down, back and forth. They're well, going at it. I Knee to the face. That, he may have broke his nose there. Absolutely. Oh, with a... Oh, that, another ref, F. What the... The ref is down. I was about to say, I think this speaks to the fact that both of these competitors are so evenly matched. 
with Profit grabbing, uh, sorry, GGP grabbing Profit's Canadian title. He figures he has it won. Now that's yeah, this, re this reminds me of something we just saw. Now, and that reminds me too, although I have to say, I think uh, yours was a little harder than that. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking when Briscoe collapsed? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Here's the oh. second referee. One, that's got to be it. One, two. Oh my goodness. Profit kicked out. How are these men continuing to go? What what a contest this is. This has got to go down. And this is saying something in the history of Great North Wrestling of being one battle for the ages. GGP is frustrated. He's done everything in his power to try and stop Profit, including hitting him with a title and and profit is still fighting wow i i'm i'm stunned that this match is still going on with the punishment both competitors have dashed dished out to each other profit can't take much more though i don't know how much more he can take he's taken everything that ggp has to offer now the referee is we might have some oh oh my goodness a second referee down one would think we're getting close to the time limit here. Well, it is a championship match, one hour time limit, and this could be it right here, because that was a spin kick GGP right to the out. ear. GGP is out. Out cold. Profit Just like we could see a moonshot. And what a... My goodness, what a beautiful moonsault, but no ref to count the three. One, two, three, you could count to 15. One. Now we go, okay, this is it here. One. Is this? Hamin. Hamin's coming out. Hamin's Magnum pulling the referee Claren. out. And Magnum, Magnum's out. Well, that's Magnum. gotta be a disqualification. Oh, this is a no contest. Yeah, clear disqualification. Wow. Magnum and Ben Hamin. Really oh, here comes Wes Briscoe. Here comes Dark Cash and the rest of Briscoe's crew. Now Briscoe uh, lost the Canadian title to Profit. Yes, I remember that. His Back in Rockland, Ontario, in 2019. So I am surprised. Oh, Briscoe reversed it or ducked double clothesline. Hamin and GGP go down, and Magnum's getting oh tossed right out of the ring unceremoniously by Profit too. They've cleaned house here, but Briscoe both, came in like a house of fire. Both officials out, but it looked like a disqualification when Hamin grabbed the one referee. I, I don't know. We might have to hear the president's ruling on that as well. I don't know if these two are going to fight or what Wes is doing. I think Wes wants that Canadian title again, but Profit, Profit has just been through a war. There's obviously respect between the two men. We're going to have to talk to the president to see the ruling on this. It was either a no contest or a disqualification. And a, and a show of respect between Profit, oh, sorry, Profit and West. There you go. And the fans really appreciative of the effort of jeremy Clark. i guess you're not out there for a reason now that wes is uh back on its feet well maybe he got out i think he had a, a bad case of shellfish poisoning and he, he recovered and here we go the bruiser who, who's a longtime veteran he's wrestled in gnw brutus beefcake greg valentine so many of the legends and, and he's wrestling an up-and-comer here from smith falls ontario hardcore steve and bruiser is from ottawa i know he has a large contingent of of fans here tonight at the earl armstrong yeah i understand as bruiser goes for a pin i understand that uh, bruiser was trying to take steve under his wing and show him the ropes literally and figuratively but steve i guess didn't really reciprocate that that uh respect and they're settling it here i guess i guess bruiser just decided to take him to school 
Definitely. And look at the guns on the bruiser. You got to give credit where credit's due. What a powerful man. It looks uh, like the, a, a. There's a display of power. I, I'm surprised because Bruiser goes about 230, 235, and Hardcore Steve managed to do a back body drop there, following it up with a big fist. Drop. fist. Yeah, now I'm. Bruiser actually trains at the same gym that I train at, as we see a big double axe handle to the back of the Bruiser. And Bruiser, he can do 225 like 50, 54 times. It's one of his specialties, which is impressive for, for a guy that's in his 50s. Absolutely, no doubt about it. He, in addition to that strength, look at the agility that uh, Bruiser displays. What, what a brawler. What an effective brawler. But yes, let's give some credit where it's due to Hardcore Steve. He, he's looking to make a name for himself from Bruiser's legacy. Yeah, Bruiser used to have a, his own independent company in Ottawa that, that I used to actually go see when I was a kid. But he, but he's still going at it. He loves fighting. He's a tough guy. He's, he's, in, a movie, he's in a Viking movie as well coming up here. As we see a big... Belly to uh, belly. Suplex there. Belly belly suplex, but and not enough. Count. And a two count. Give give Steve credit. This this man is taking some punishment too. Yeah, they're, while they're both down now, it's not going to be anywhere near a 10 yet count. Bruiser looks mad. Nailing him with some hard forearms to the head. Whips him off the rope. Steve reverses it. Goes for a clothesline. Oh my Crucifix. God. Crucifix. One, I'm 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 surprised two. Bruiser was able to pull off that crucifix. Very good. Absolutely, showing some skill too. These these men really clearly are are big. They're strong, and they have significant stamina. But when when you're around the 250, 60, 70 range, and you're you're going at it with no breaks, it takes its toll. As we see a side Russian leg sweep on the part of Bruiser. Yes, one of one of Ross Hart's favorite maneuvers. One of one of my trainers. He he loved to see those Russian leg sweeps. Charlie says impressive for any age. Some of the stuff Bruiser is doing, that's for sure. He's he's a great athlete. But that great. that that's not athletic. No, the low this is a this is a no holds barred match, and that was blatant. But you you got to at least show some respect with the low blows. That's just disrespectful. Well, it, it seems that Hardcore Steve is not above taking shortcuts as he's continuing to... He's getting the ref's attention there by the choke using the ropes for leverage. Hardcore Steve, the greatest wrestler from Smith Falls in the history of Smith Falls. He does have that distinction. And a, and a strong resemblance, in my opinion, of one Big Dick Dudley from ECW. Th that is true. That is true. Now, I do remember uh, I, I first saw Steve at a Harry Smith wrestling seminar in Smith Falls, and he definitely showed that, that he was tough in that, taking some moves from Harry the British Bulldog Smith. And, and since then... His, his career has, has gone further. He's still young in the sport. But now he's bringing some tables, which Bruiser likes tables. So I don't know if this is a smart yeah. move. Yes, I was just going to say, getting the furniture may backfire. This is a specialty of the Bruiser. Just whips Bruiser down by the hair. That looks Rest like a, a hard plastic table. Jim says wrestlers that look like adults. Well, well, Great North Wrestling is a very old school league, guys. We, we do have the young 17-year-olds like Magnum, but we have the veterans who have wrestled. Like, Bruiser's wrestled Superfly Snuka. He's been around. One, two, kick out by Hardcore Steve. Bruiser picking him up. Yes, we we pride ourselves on a hard-hitting old school product. Oh, my God. Wow, look at the table destroyed. He whipped him so hard that he ran into the table himself. I've never, ever seen that in all of my years watching professional wrestling. Wow, Bruiser in a heap. He obviously took a, a significant blow to the back of his head. That table's a write-off, sir. 
Yeah, and it's full of, of steel. I don't know if a piece of that steel went into his head when, when Steve followed him in with that table. But Steve is setting up this other table now, and it looks solid. Yeah, that's that's probably... Bruiser. Bruiser's getting a second win, though. Wow. Respect. Bruiser's slamming Steve down onto the table. Uh-oh, Bruiser is going to go up. Bruiser is definitely going to go up, and it's not looking good for Hardcore Steve. Oh, my goodness. Wow! Devastating splash. One, two, three. Now that That's it. The veteran uh, took the young guy to school. I was going to say for sure, but it looks like there could be unfinished business here and this is the main event he showed some tenacity as where again the blood hunter is trying to get it going right away but james storms former impact wrestling world champion ducked the boot gets whipped into the rope now hits blood hunter with a big clothesline and that is that is impressive that blood hunter is not even budging but he got him there with the forearm to the head as blood hunter takes a powder with kevin sullivan back back on yeah kevin outside. sullivan is stalking james storm as the blood hunter is, is fighting with james storm now they're they're already starting this out in the crowd it is a and no the, disqualification match and the fans rightfully here the chair move out of the way all oh, right to the midsection and to the back oh listen to the scream from james storm yeah that's gotta hurt now he's choking james my looks goodness. like he's gonna whip james storm into the chair my now goodness. james reverses it oh my oh god oh my goodness blood hunter went right through some chairs into the board and there's no hockey helmet or padding here folks no and the fans are this actually is reminding me of like a street fight the way the fans are gathering around these two and giving them space some fans rightfully moved out of the way a while ago you don't want to be caught up when a 270 pound man is coming at you storm again no oh, oh boy that's that's devastating that's, that's devastating right into the boards again no padding that's Sullivan gonna move some looking, discs around. Sullivan's looking perplexed. Sullivan Storm. looks like he almost is cast under a spell. Storm is saying he wants to throw Blood Hunter back no, into those boards. No. Oh my god. Oh my did you see the elevation on that animal? Uh, I was gonna say it looked like he got about three feet into the air. And, it and then came like crashing it, down onto that cement floor as, as we can see the fans here. It looks like uh, the Blood Hunter C4 caught the edge of the boards too. Yeah, this is getting out of control. I know it's an ODQ match, but you're going to need to get a second referee out here to restore order or the president. We see the the fans are loving being this close to the action. Well, again, Storm is a, a drag out, knockdown competitor, and and I got to say, I'm a, I'm more than a little bit impressed that he is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the blood hunter but look at that right into the ring post. forehead Again. of course uh james storm was part of a popular tag team with bobby Roode, beer money in tna yes. too but he's getting his bell ring hip toss now to the cement oh. not only beer money but america's most wanted with wildcat chris harris that i will be interviewing later in the month oh james storm blocked that chair from the blood hunter now james storm has the blood hunter with the chair just nailed him in the back in the midsection i i think with the blood hunter matches one of the mistakes there the uh his opponents make is that they figured they've dished out so much punishment that he's got to have no gas left in the tank but really it's it seems to be the opposite the more punishment the more physicality the stronger wow that's a pretty, pretty uh, i think uh, that i think that angered the blood hunter that uh, i was gonna say i think I that may have been a mistake i was gonna to finish my thought opponents think that they've got again on the floor with a hip toss they think they've got the blood hunter down but he seems to thrive 
the longer matches go on on physical pain and punishment. Yeah, and now it looks like the Blood Hunter is going to give James Storm a taste of its own medicine with the hockey wow. boards. Face first into the glass. Devastating. Nipping. Yeah, and I would have to say he's lucky this isn't a Falls Count Anywhere match, but I think the Blood Hunter is trying to end it right here with the chair. But Storm managed to it looked like give him a body shot to the midsection and temporarily escape, but the Blood Hunter's stalking him now. Relentless. Storm has something in his hand as Blood Hunter whips him in the back. He's got a pop. Oh no. Not a beer. That's got a burn. Now he's bashing him with a Pepsi can. Wow. Blood Hunter reminds me of uh many of the classic horror movie uh villains and characters that he just keeps coming. You want to say Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers, he just keeps coming. You you have to you have to take that into account when you're wrestling him. I was going to say foolish enough to wrestle him, but Storm certainly has the heart with a rake of the eyes by the Blood Hunter. Storm owns the owes that fan a couple of dollars for sealing his Pepsi <laughs> as he just gets his sternum bashed with a big size 15 boot there by the Blood Hunter who's driving that knee into the back and wrenching onto the neck of James Storm. Yeah, it's it's really impressive to me that the number of blows each competitor has absorbed here, and they're, they're not out on their feet. In fact, Storm seems to be feeding off the crowd and making a comeback here. And I believe Storm is in a Kevin Hart movie upcoming too, so he better not get too hurt in this match. That's a big opportunity as the Blood Hunter just Pulls whips him down. Pulls the hair. Back back to the control. I never saw a hair pull there, but I definitely I saw him stop that. But now he's given up on the technical wrestling. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he's going to go for that diving headbutt finishing maneuver. And he's had enough of this match with all of James Storm's dirty tactics. Oh, but James Storm goodness. moves. The well was dry. Storm moved at the last second where that would have been it. Sullivan's in shock here. Storm's trying to rally the crowd. Storm, a very, very popular wrestler. Bloodhunter's still going after him. James Storm's fired up, though. Big time. Reversal. Reversal. Forearm to the head. Looks like atomic drop. Punch to the face. Storm's a big lad. Deceptively, isn't he? And yeah, deceptively yeah. strong. Shoul the shoulder, oh my God, kicks him in the back of the head. Go in for, looks like a boot. The Blood Hunter stops Locked it with a boot it. of his own. Locked it. This could be trouble for Storm. Wow, those huge, huge chops. Frying pans. Yeah. Blood Hunter's calling for something here from Sullivan. Looks like a chair. I think Blood Hunter's mad that uh, James Storm was using chairs on him earlier. He looks like he's setting something up in the corner here. Well, he shouldn't be surprised because it is anything goes. Looks like a well, it looked no. like a body slam, but a maneuver by Storm. Caught him in the jaw. Oh, Rask, but just drives his Rask. face right into that chair. Oh, wow. That looks like that's got to be it. No, there's One, nobody home there. Two. Wow, two and a half. Sullivan's oh. got the chair already. John, okay. Sullivan wants, he doesn't care about the pin. Sullivan is telling Bloodhunter, I want to hurt this guy. End his career. Well, he very well might tonight. Oh, and a, a storm out of the way. Blood Hunter hits himself in the head. Only a two count. Those are cables. Those, those aren't yeah. ropes. And there was there was no hands protecting his head there. That was Not a chair all. right to the no. head. James Storm is getting frustrated now with with Sullivan. Blood Hunter just got James Storm for a roll up one, here. One, Good one, technical one, maneuver two, by the Blood Hunter. Three. That's yeah. it. Blood Hunter Tech defeats the former Impact World Champion. That Let's didn't look like a technical maneuver to me, Hannibal. That looked like powder to the face. 
an old trick of Kevin Sullivan. James Storm uh, looks to be in serious trouble here. Blood Hunter with the victory nonetheless. Wow, what a battle. That did not disappoint. Storm still down. I can hear them screaming already in Smith Falls. They knew July 15th. They thought he was gone. But just like anything else, he has risen and risen with more power, more destructive force. The only thing I worry about in Smith Falls Who's got the gahonies to get in the ring with the blood hunter? Tonight, two people fall and may not get up for a while. They were destroyed, they were taken apart, and this is just a warm up. July 15th, Smith Falls. I'm going to let him go 100%. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates.